Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Danny, the Wicked Awesome Gardener, and I am so, so excited to shoot this video today because it's the first kind of in a series that has been on my mind for a while. And to start that series off properly really requires a little bit of background on me, on the channel. And so where we've had a lot of new subscribers in the last couple of months, and a huge influx of subscribers in the last just two weeks, ever since I did that video response to Jess at Roots and Refuge on her rant video about pesticides and how people were calling her a conspiracy theorist, and which is ridiculous. But since we've got such a new influx of new friends, I figured this is the perfect time to go ahead and talk about what it is that I want to do. I started this channel mainly as just a gardening channel to teach people about growing, um, whether you're growing in a small backyard like I am now and like I was when I started my channel, whether you have tons of land or whether you've even got just a little porch or a sunny window. These are all things that I want to be talking about and teaching. But in my heart has always been the heart of a homesteader, somebody who wants to live on maybe not a huge expansive tract of land, but just little space that's enough to have some chickens and a couple of goats, and maybe some pigs. And yeah, you guys got me thinking cow now and we'll, we'll see about that. I, I think it's gonna be goats for me as far as dairy, but that aside, I want to get down to the roots of this and talk about why I want to homestead. Now, for those of you who did see my response video, I did talk about how I always grew up um, gardening with my parents, uh, with wanting to be Laura Ingalls <laughs> and all of that, and, and being fascinated by the original homesteaders um, really living off the land. And I'm a modern girl. I like my modern conveniences. I need my internet. Um, <laughs> you know, things like that. But there are definitely things that I know I can do and would really enjoy doing that would be more sustainable and all of that. So in here beats the heart of a hopeful homesteader. So without further ado, I'm going to get into the five major reasons that I want to be a homesteader. At the root of everything would be satisfaction. Um, gardening, tending animals, building infrastructure, and generally doing things on my own gives me an immense sense of satisfaction. And it's really motivating to just do more of the same. Um, there's an immense pride that just comes with doing things with your own two hands or doing things on your own. So that's something that really, just as a personal motivator for me is, is huge. I can just imagine a few years from now or a few years into owning my property, stepping out my back door, looking at my big, lush, beautiful garden, some berry bushes, some fruit trees, the animals, and feeling just this serene and, and peaceful, like deep in your soul feeling. Like everything is right with the world. And for me, it's not just making things from scratch. Like I can go to the store and I can buy some milk and I can make some mozzarella cheese. You know, that's, you know, that's an accomplishment. It really is. But there's just this drive in me that wants to go as like to the roots of it as possible. Like grow the food that feeds the goat, that produces the milk that then I make into cheese. Like that's really, really homegrown, like really getting down to the base of it. And, and that's what I want to do as much as I possibly can. Number two is knowing what's going into my food. So all around the world, but in America especially, we have to face up to what factory farming is doing. Use of herbicides and pesticides are not only making it into the food that we eat that goes into our bodies, it's going into the bodies of the animals we eat and then into us as well. And it's also going down into the soil and destroying our soil biology. So all of these pesticides, herbicides, synthetic fertilizers, they're stripping our soils of what they really need to be healthy and to allow food to thrive. So you're going in there and you're stripping the soil nutrition out and then you're going and laying down synthetic fertilizers to make it fertile again and growing the food and stripping everything out and go it, it's a vicious cycle use of heavy farm machinery also requires that rows of crops be spaced out to accommodate those machines and so you're actually losing a lot of growing space a lot of 
food production space um, to make things streamlined uh, to be able to use the machinery. And let's not forget all the fumes, the pollution that is expelled by these heavy farm machines getting up into the air, all over our crops, down into the soil. So there's that that most people don't even consider. All in the name of making things as streamlined and inexpensive as they possibly can to increase their profits. And I'm not going to get into the whole conspiracy theory thing because we don't know what we don't know, but we do know people like money, people like profits, and people will cut the corners that they think they can cut. That's all I'm saying. If I'm growing at home, I can control my growing conditions. I can work with organic ways to build my soil health, to fertilize my plants, to keep away pests. One of the things that I like to do is I like to fight pest bugs by using beneficial bugs and planting things that will attract those bugs in like praying mantis and ladybugs and lace wings in there to take care of the pests. There's also other alternatives like DE or BT, a good spray with some Dawn dish soap and water. There's a lot of alternatives that you can use. Also with home gardening, you can plant your things so much closer together that you're getting a lot more food production in a small space. Number three, growing my own animals for dairy and meat. And there's a few reasons that this really appeals to me. One is that like the produce, it's partly from a desire to remove all those harmful chemicals and things like that from my diet. Pesticides and herbicides in animal feed, hormones and medication to help them grow and stave off illnesses that often come with being packed together in small spaces, which is often how our food is grown but also just the satisfaction of raising my own and the joy of just keeping animals because I love me some animals. I love to give them scritches and love on them and all of that. So just the joy of taking care of my animals day to day is also um, just a really happy thing. And to some people that might sound silly, raising an animal and loving on it when you are just going to kill it and eat it. But I'm gonna say that probably most people saying that aren't vegan. They're out there eating burgers and chicken wings without giving a thought to where their food came from and what that animal's life was like before it became their food. Most chickens never even see daylight. Even the cage-free, free-range chickens that you buy are often just not kept in little cages. They're just in a huge, huge warehouse, no windows, artificial light, their beaks cut off partially so that they can eat their food, but they can't peck at the other chickens and uh, cause loss of product. So a lot of our meat leads a really, really terrible life. And I would rather see my chickens be able to spend time out in the sunshine and scratching at the earth and eating some bugs and just enjoying chicken life until the time comes when it's time to process and time to be on my plate. I've never actually slaughtered an animal for food. I have yet to do this, but I think I know myself well enough that I can own an animal and I can love on it. I can name it. I will name that pig bacon, but I know that I'm going to give that animal love. I'm going to give it attention. I'm going to give it affection. I'm going to give it a good life where it gets to be a pig and then it's going to go to freezer camp and I'm not going to feel badly when the time comes. Sorry for the abrupt change. The sun shifted and the lighting got weird so I just had to move. But what it comes down to is this. I'm going to eat steak either way. It's just one is more ethical in my mind and kinder to the animal. Reason number four that I want to homestead is financial stability. Now, make no mistake, I am not under some illusion that I'm gonna move to this property and woo, here's seeds and here's free food from the garden and woo, here's a pig and now I've just got free food. I know that's not how things work. There is a cost to gardening. I know that very well, especially when you let yourself get a little carried away with, um, you know, all sorts of fancy equipment. And, you know, like I've got a compost tumbler and I've got my green stock and I've got my cattle panels. And, you know, there, there are costs to gardening that are just, it's not just, here's some seeds, 
throw them out there, boom, you get food. Not only is there a, an actual monetary cost, there is a time cost. There is what goes into raising an animal. There's the infrastructure, there's the feed for the animal, there's, you know, there are ways to cut costs and I am very, very excited to learn about those and try things for my own, uh, to try and be as self-reliant as possible. But against the potential food shortages and rising inflation, for example, eggs at my local grocery store used to be 79 cents for a carton, and now they're just about $5. And that, to me, is insane. So pretty soon, any day now, we're gonna have chickens right over here. And they won't be laying for a couple more months because they're, you know, my friend has been raising them. They're only about three months old. <laughs> They'll be laying soon, but not too soon, so we're still gonna have to buy those $5 eggs. But growing your own garden, raising your own animals for meat, this gives you some control at least over your food supply. Because if they're out of something at the grocery store and they're not gonna be getting more, you know that you've got five or six chickens packed away in the freezer, or you've got that side of beef. Now, I'm not going to be raising cows for my own meat anytime soon, but who knows? Who knows what the future brings? Maybe someday I've got enough land and I can have my dairy cow and breed it with a meat cow and then have a, a crossbred that I can raise up, you know, raise that calf up for, you know, 18, 24 months or so, however long it is that you really um, want to put into a calf before you you slaughter it but you know and then there you go you've got meat so you know it's definitely something to think about also just the idea of homesteading in the first place really lends me to thinking about self-sufficiency and a closed loop system like you pull out the things in your garden at the end of the year and you throw them in the compost heap and those break down and you got all your chicken manure uh, actually, what I'm planning to do with this garden at the end of this year is to um, fence it off really good and let my chickens go in and take care of the garden. They're going to go in and they're going to be fed by the um, what's left of the plants. They're going to poop <laughs> in the garden. We're going to work that in. It'll have all winter to kind of decompose and mix in with the soil. So that's dual purpose. It's going to feed my chickens. It's going to feed my soil. And what did it cost me? Nothing except, well, the upkeep of my chickens and having a garden in the first place. But <laughs> it's going to save me a little work on that end too. So all in all, it's, it's just that kind of magic of that closed circle, or mostly closed circle, because I'll probably bring some other things in for the compost, whatever. But just, that's magical to me. Just that the whole system just lives in harmony, and that's what I want to create. That's what I want to live in. And finally, and I know this is kind of tied into financial security, but really what it comes down to for me is stability. I've had a lot of housing instability in my life and some of you who have been around the channel for a while know that. I've had landlords jack my rent up to way more than I could afford. I've had landlords that didn't keep their building up to code and then got shut down by the local health department, which left me homeless. Uh, I had two landlords in a row that decided to take advantage of this wonderful, booming real estate market, and I can't blame them. They're wonderful people, but they sold their buildings within a year of me moving into them, and both times the buyers wanted to live in my unit, so I was displaced and had to move. I moved into this one apartment in June of 2018, and then she sold the building and I had to move in November of 2020. Then I moved into a wonderful new apartment. It's where I built up that garden that you saw in all of my videos last year. If you guys wanna go check out some of the garden tours and see what I did, there was a lot more than I have this year, a lot more. I feel so puny by comparison this year where I've just got seven or eight different things in my garden instead of the like 30 different things I had before. Um, Cause you guys know, uh, if you've been here, I like variety. But then um, that person also sold their building. So in November of 2021, I had to move again. I've spent the better part of the last 12 years moving from place to place. And if I go back and think about it, 
I've literally lived in 12 different places in the last 12 years. I barely have time to settle in and feel at home. The last few apartments I've lived in, and that goes for now that I'm back home at my parents' house, I never even fully bothered to unpack. Like, I didn't put my books on the bookshelf. I still haven't put my books on the bookshelf, and I'm planning to be here for as long as it takes to save up for my property. So it could be a couple of years, and I still got my books in boxes. It's, it's almost like a PTSD at this point for having to move. So yeah, 12 years, 12 places, and for a little while, one of those places was my car in a Walmart parking lot. I had an apartment for a little while that was small and had some issues. And then when the owner tried to evict another one of the tenants, they went, oh really, and went to the town and complained about a whole laundry list of issues with the building that, yes, I complained about as well, but I mean, I wasn't going to push it too far. It was cheap and I could deal. But then the Board of Health came out and they said, uh, this is not suitable for human habitation. You don't have a permit for multi-family buildings here. Um, you were given a variance to create this apartment for family use only in the 70s. You never get an occupancy permit, all this stuff. And so they kicked us all out. And even though I had money in the bank and I had three jobs, I still couldn't find an apartment because rents where I am have gone through the roof. And so even though, you know, six grand in the bank and still couldn't get an apartment, what? So yeah, I lived in my car for a while. It was not great. I don't recommend it. I take that back. Under certain circumstances, living in a car, maybe not my car that I had at the time, but maybe a van. Living in a van and roaming around the country actually is very appealing to me, but just the way I was having to live at the time, don't recommend it. So after having to leave this last apartment in November, 2021, I was just like, that's it. I'm fed up. I've had it with, I'm not paying these rents that have gone through the roof. Even in the last year, they've raised in like crazy amounts. So I'm not going to do that. No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not paying $2,000 a month to live in somebody else's house. So I've moved in here with my parents. Um, I started YouTube a little over a year ago. I think it's coming up on, oh, tomorrow will be a year and a half. Aw, coincides with Independence Day. Um, yeah, so very much inspired by the words of Jess over at Roots and Refuge that YouTube has done a lot for her. YouTube has made her family's dream come true. Well, <laughs> look, you know, it's kind, kind of her dream and Maya's just totally up for being along for the ride. And I just, I just love how they fulfill each other's dreams, really, because he's helped her with her dream of having this big, beautiful farm and she's, you know, supporting him in the dream of building their house, which is something he's always wanted to do. Like, it's lovely. Um, for me, it's just me. Um, my kids are off to college now. And so it's time for mama's dreams. <laughs> so, you know, I started YouTube, um, just because everybody was seeing all my pictures of my garden that I was always talking about on my Facebook and said, you know, you should do some videos. And I'm like, I don't know how to edit videos and I've, I don't want to do all that. But then it just kind of intrigued me. And then the more I heard her talk about how it's helped her achieve her dreams, I'm like, maybe that dream's possible for me too. So let's put some info out there on the internet and teach people how to do things because you know okay there's a million garden channels out there there's you know like next level gardening and am i gardener and you can't eat the grass there's 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 so many channels out there teaching people how to garden but does everybody know about those channels no some people find their way to me first very few of them so far but they find their way to me first and if i can give them information because maybe they're not going to stumble on one of those other channels Maybe they're not going to find that nugget of information somewhere else. So I'm here. I'm given what I can. And hopefully that leads me to being able to live the life I've always wanted. So yeah, here I am. I'm home with my parents and uh, my dad mostly kind of gave over his garden to me this year so that I could continue on with my passion and 
with my videos and all of that. And I am saving, 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 saving. So I'm going very small budget because that's all I'm gonna have is <laughs> a small budget. But also I want something that I can pay off very quickly. I don't wanna have some huge mortgage and have hundreds of thousands of dollars hanging over my head that if there's a misstep, if there's an illness, a leg break, a something, a major emergency, that I'm not gonna miss a few payments and then just lose everything I have. So I want something small, small budget. Uh, so this is maybe sounding kind of crazy and a long shot and hard to find, but I'm looking to spend no more than $50,000 on my property. And I want something that already has a house on it. So again, that gets a little more difficult. Originally, I was thinking about the upstate New York area, um, kind of the capital region and a little bit west and, and south of there. Um, but then I expanded my search like way out to Virginia, to the Carolinas, a little bit of Tennessee and Kentucky. But the more I've thought about it um, and the more I've looked at certain economic factors and things like that, and based on where my youngest got accepted to college, I think I'm really looking at um, staying in the Northeast. So it's probably gonna be upstate New York. There've been definitely several properties on the market um, in the area that I'm, I'm thinking of that have been in my price range and have been, you know, not falling down shacks. So that's helpful. I am very handy. I can hang drywall, I can DIY. If I can YouTube it, I can learn it, I can do it. So I'll call in professionals for things like, you know, electric work, things like that. I'm, I'm, I'm not about to get myself shocked, but so that's kind of what I'm gonna be looking at. Um, right now I've got just about $2,000 saved, so yay. Um, I am on my way and I'm looking to save like a target of about, um, $15,000 so that I have a decent down payment and all of that and we'll go from there and who knows how long that's going to take me to save it's taken me a good six months to save up that much although things should be accelerated at this point um, just about finished paying off my car Woo! and that's really going to help things but like I said when it comes to stability I'm looking for a small budget property which means it's going to be likely a small property I'm looking to have at least two acres, probably in the like two to five acre range would make me really happy because, well, I'll tell you, it's a lot more than the tenth of an acre that I'm currently sitting on um, with my little backyard here. So, but the reason for that is so that I can pay it off quickly so that I own it free and clear. Once I get in there and I'm gonna do some of the basics, but then I'm gonna bend all my will and energy toward paying that sucker off because what's mine is mine. What's mine, what I own, is gonna be just that much harder for somebody to take away from me. You're gonna have to wrest it from my cold, dead hands. <laughs> because I've had so many instances in the last decade where somebody else's choices, somebody else's decisions have uprooted me from my home have upended my entire life, have arrested my progress, and I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of it. I'm done letting other people's whims and decisions just throw my life into chaos. It's not happening anymore, it's done. As long as I have my land, I can make all the rest of the things work out. And this I know. So for those of you who are new, now you have a better idea of what I'm aiming at and those who have been around for a while have a better understanding of my big why. And I'm gonna do a series of videos on my uh, hopeful homestead and maybe that's what I'll call the, uh, the playlist, I don't know, the hopeful homestead series, I, I don't know. But I'm gonna do a whole bunch of videos on my future homestead. I think the next video is going to be about skills that I'm learning to prepare for homesteading. Uh, 
Again, I'm just gonna go back and reference Jazz at Roots and Refuge, and you guys might find that this might be a little bit of a trend. Um, I do watch an awful lot of their videos, so it kind of pops out. But, you know, there's that whole turn your waiting room into a classroom. And so I'm trying to do that as much as possible while I'm here in this urban setting. And you can probably hear how busy the street I live on is. Um, and it just got even busier because there were two ways in and out of this half a town and they just closed the bridge for the next two years to do repairs. <laughs> so now all of that comes down my street. Frustrating, frustrating, but Oh well. So yeah, you're gonna see a video series on my future homestead, but you're still gonna get from me the usual gardening tips and education, some garden tours, some planting videos, seed hauls, all those good things, as well as maybe the occasional cooking video. And I guess that's about it. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already and then hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video and give this video a big thumbs up. So tell me your homestead story down in the comments below. I'd really love to hear about how you came to this life, how you found your homestead, or what are you dreaming of? What are you dreaming of? That's always something good to kind of get with some other people and dream together because encouraging each other in this life is really really something that i find very important so all right guys i will see you in our next video Bye bye